Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions, and in today's video, we're gonna solve 10 common AutoCAD issues in under 10 minutes, so stick with this video. I think you guys are gonna learn a lot. Before we jump in, today's video is sponsored by Plex Earth. If you haven't checked them out already, they're a longtime sponsor of the channel, and we're gonna talk a bit more about the software, but in the meantime, they are a silver sponsor of Autodesk University 2023. So if you're heading to AU 2023, be sure to check them out. They'll be holding live training sessions, and these have been very popular in the past, to the point that this year's is already sold out. But they've added a second set of training sessions, which you can sign up for now at the Autodesk University site. And if you're going to be there, be sure you stop in and say hi to them. Tell them Brandon sent you. They'll be at Autodesk University, which is at the Venetian Resort in Las Vegas from Monday, November 13th to Wednesday, November 15th this year. All right, let's jump into today's video. All right, so first up is the error or issue you get when you're trying to open a drawing that may be read only. So you can see here, I'm going to open up a CAD drawing and I've got this error here saying that it is open currently uh, and it's open by this user here. So what does this mean in AutoCAD and how do you fix or get around it? You have a few options. A, if you know who the user is, you can get them to close and save the drawing and then simply reopen the drawing on your machine and you're not gonna have this issue. Now the next option would be to open it as a read only file and then do a save as. Now this will make a copy of the drawing, but if you're in a rush, you can simply save it as, create a copy or a new number. So we're gonna call this one example rev two and hit save. Now you can see that it is no longer a read only drawing and you can now save and work in it as usual. Another option would be to go to the folder where it is saved and see if there are dot DWL files in that folder. Sometimes if a network server is lagging or slow, after someone closes a drawing, those two files will get left and that is what's telling AutoCAD that the drawing is locked. Those are DWL lock files. Uh, if you can delete those, then you should be able to open it without running into the read-only issue. Now, the last and final tip here would be to type in the who has command and hit enter. W-H-O-H-A-S and hit enter. It's gonna ask you to select a drawing, select the drawing that you're trying to open, and it's going to pop up in AutoCAD here and tell you who has that drawing open if it's a named uh, license or named computer on a company network. That's all for this one. All right, so the second common AutoCAD issue that you can run into is what happens when your file dialog boxes or dialog boxes in general don't open in AutoCAD. So you can see here, if I type in open, I don't get the normal dialog box. I'm getting a op, uh, command line option to open a drawing. Now, this is also going to affect a handful of uh, dialog boxes like save as. You can see it's coming in down at the command line and I'm not getting the usual pop-up. This is because a system variable has changed in the back end of AutoCAD. To fix this, simply type in file, F-I-L-E, D-I-A, that is for file dialog box. Hit enter and change or make sure that this value is set to one. So it is currently zero on mine. I'm changing it to one and hitting enter. Now when I type in open, I'm going to get the typical file open dialog box or if I type in save as, that's gonna come up as well. This variable can change occasionally if a drawing crashes, a reinstall, or some sort of error in your system. It's easy to fix though, and a good one to know off the top of your head. All right, so next up is kind of two in one. Uh, the first is what to do when you cannot select objects before entering in a command. So say I wanna select this object and type move or M. It's gonna unselect my object after I've hit move, and now I've got to reselect it again. This again is a variable that has been flipped or switched within AutoCAD, and that is the pick 
first. So P-I-C-K-F-I-R-S-T. This is preventing or stopping you from being able to select objects before the command and is a big pain in the butt. I typically like to select all of my objects and then activate, say, the move command. Setting your pick first uh, variable to one is going to fix that issue. So you can see I can select my object, type M for move, and then simply move it around. Now, similar to this is the pick add command. So if the pick add command is not set properly, you cannot select more than one object. You can see when I selected these objects and then I selected this one, it erased or unselected my first selection. Now, changing the pick add variable to two is going to fix that one. So change pick add, P-I-C-K-A-D-D, to the variable number two, and now I can select as many objects as I want in one selection set. All right, so number five, this is when zoom extents blows you out to the middle of nowhere in AutoCAD land. Now, this typically happens when you have an object that is somewhere existing way off away from your typical drawing area. So to fix this, I typically will zoom extents and then scroll out, so zoom out, and then create a selection window crossing to the left so it selects everything and you'll be able to see where that object is that is not part of your drawing. So if we zoom way in here, you can see that our drawing's over here on the left, but this little object over here on the right, whatever it may be, a little point or a circle, you can open up properties here to see what it is. It's a little circle way out here. If I delete that now, so I've hit delete, if I zoom extents again, it's gonna bring me back to my drawing area. So again, typically when zoom extents blasts out into the middle of nowhere, that means you have a small object or XREF or something that's coming in, typically at like a zero zero coordinate when you're working in uh, UTM or lat long. All right, so next tip is what to do when your mouse wheel stops panning. So a lot of us use the middle button here to pan around our drawing. And if that ever stops working, the command for that is M B U T T O N pan, M button pan. And you want to make sure that's set to one. If it's set to zero, I'm clicking it with my middle mouse here. It's not moving around. And instead it's bringing up a uh, right click menu for snaps. So again, M button pan, hit enter and then hit one and enter again. All right. So now we're going to pause and thank our sponsor and take a look at Plex Earth. Today's video is sponsored by Plex Earth. I've talked about Plex Earth a few times on the channel before, but if you're not familiar with it, Plex Earth is an AutoCAD and Civil 3D plugin that helps bring additional data and visualization into your project. This can include imagery, surface data, and integration with Google Earth. You can easily download and install the plugin from their website and unlock up-to-date imagery, terrain, and visualization options instantly. With Plex Earth, you have the ability to import up-to-date satellite imagery from a variety of sources, including Google Earth, Airbus, Hexagon, Nearmap, and Maxar, along with others. Just a few clicks and you can select your image source, choose an area you'd like the imagery to cover, and have it inserted directly into your drawing as a background image. The image is automatically downloaded and geo-referenced within your drawing, creating a mosaic of high resolution images in just a few minutes. Once your image is in the drawing, you also have options built in to process and clip images as needed to get the best results you're looking for in your drawing. One feature I really like is the ability to specify a corridor width and then have the imagery automatically populated along say an alignment of a new road design or some other area that you are working on. Not only does this save you time, but it will also help keep your drawing size in check by only using imagery relevant to your area of interest. Having up-to-date imagery can be a game changer for project design, especially in early phases where you may need to quickly design a concept that can be integrated and work with existing features of an area without the added costs of a full survey or getting imagery flown specifically for your project. If you'd like to learn more and try out Plex Earth, 
You can find the link in the description down below. And if you're one of the first five people to click the special offer link, you can get two months of Plex Earth Pro subscription completely free. As a special promotion for Cat Intentions viewers, I highly recommend you guys check it out. Again, that link is down below in the description. All right, so on to our next common issue, and that is ribbons and command line disappearing within AutoCAD. So if you ever lose your command line down here at the bottom, the simple command to bring that back is to hold down control and hit the number nine. Now I've just hit it and it's gonna ask if I wanna close it. I'm gonna say yes. And hitting control and nine again is going to open it back up. Now another common issue is your ribbon may disappear. You have a couple options here to bring it back. You can try switching the workspace using the gear here, switching it to a different one. We'll typically regen the ribbon and bring it back if it is closed. The other option would be to type in the word ribbon. This is going to open and close it. You can use ribbon close or ribbon to bring it back to your drawing and set it back up the way it was originally. All right, moving on. The next common issue that I get asked about is how do I get out of a viewport if I've gotten stuck inside of it? So you can see here we've got a viewport we are in layout space and say we've double clicked in our viewport and we're drawing or editing our drawing and then we go to zoom out and we realize uh oh we're inside the viewport and we can't click outside of it to get out without moving around our drawing here so the quick and easy way to get out of a viewport or model space if you're in it is to simply click on the word model here down at the bottom and now it's put us back into paper space you can simply click to get back in and click to get back out. That's a quick and easy way to skip the double clicking if you can't physically double click outside of the viewport. Now, the next tip or common issue is similar and that is if you have two viewports, so you can see I've got a big one here and then a small one. If I go to click or double click on the one inside of the bigger viewport, it activates the bigger one by default and it's not letting me select this small inset viewport to edit it. Now the quick way to fix that is to hold control and hit R. So hold down control and tap R to cycle through all of your viewports. This is going to be super helpful if you have a drawing with a bunch of different viewports holding it down, tapping R and you're switching between the two. All right, so continuing along, we're getting close. Uh, this one is the hatch circles. So I can't say I need to hatch an area and I get this error or issue saying that there is not a closed boundary that can be determined. That typically means there is a gap between the ends of some of your lines and it's typically going to highlight this for you. Now the issue some people run into is that even when you fix these, the little red circles stick around and don't necessarily disappear. Now, this isn't a big issue in general, although some people do like to get rid of them. So today's tip for that one is simply typing in regen, R-E-G-E-N, is going to remove those red circles. But don't worry, they're not going to plot, even though you do have them there. They are just a warning or error bubble. Typing in regen, as I mentioned, removes those from your drawing. All right, so we're getting close to the end here. The second and last common issue is not being able to delete specific layers simply because they either have an object on them or there's something up uh, to do a force delete. I'm gonna show you that in a second here, but you can see, say I wanna delete this lighting layer by hitting the delete or X here. It's telling me that it cannot be deleted because of one of these reasons. It's a layer zero def points. It's the current layer or it contains objects or objects that XRefs depend on. Either way, it's not going to let me delete that lighting layer. But what if you want to forcibly delete a layer, even if it's got stuff on it, you just want to wipe it out. It can also be a quick and easy way to delete a ton of objects if you want to clean your drawing. You can simply type in lay del, L-A-Y-D-E-L, -E and this is basically going to force delete a layer. So you can select any object on a layer and hit enter, and that's going to force delete that layer along with those objects, or you can type N for name and hit enter, and it's gonna give you a list of layers that you can forcibly delete. So let's delete that lighting layer and hit okay. It's gonna tell us and warn us that there are objects on there, but hitting yes is going to delete it anyway. You can see all that lighting line work disappeared along with 
the lighting layer. All right, so the last common issue we're gonna cover in today's video is how do I explode a block that doesn't let me explode it? So I'm gonna type in explode here and hit enter, and I'm gonna try and explode these window blocks. Hitting enter, I've got the warning that one could not be exploded. I'm gonna try it again, still could not be exploded. The workaround or way around this is to type B and hit enter to bring up the block menu then simply choose the block you want to uh, explode. I wanna explode my window one, and you just need to select the allow exploding option. This is what controls whether or not anybody can explode blocks from within the model space. Hitting the check mark there allows it to be exploded again. We're gonna hit okay. You wanna redefine your block. That's gonna re redefine all of the instances of that block in the drawing. It's gonna double check the attributes. You can just leave all those as they were. And now when I type in explode and hit enter, it's gonna explode that block regardless if it was or wasn't checked off before we fix that issue. I wanna thank Plex Earth for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't checked them out, be sure to use the link up above or down below to get two free months of their software. And if you're in Autodesk University, make sure you try and attend one of their training sessions or just stop by their booth and let them know Brandon sent you. Again, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Cheers.